good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to join you uh, for the common st space of the 2014 Global Forum on Migration and Development. I am here on behalf of the UNDP Administrator, Helen Clark, who also happens to be the chair of the UN Development Group, who sends her best regards and regrets that she cannot be here with you this afternoon. And of course, she also sends her best wishes for the success of this forum. The creation of a common space, a common discourse, standards and norms is fundamentally a United Nations issue. It is what the United Nations is about. This role is now being reinvigorated. An unprecedented global consultation has engaged people and governments in determining the world's development priorities beyond 2015, the deadline for achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. We have pulled over a million voices, yet at the same time, more than a billion people have voted with their feet and have chosen migration as the best development opportunity, adaptation strategy, or coping mechanism for themselves and their families. I want to make three points. First, already under the current, arguably imperfect system for governing <coughs> migration, the human development benefits are large, but important inequalities persist. In 2009, UNDP's flagship population, the Human Development Report, found that those migrants who moved from countries with a low human development index, I'm sure you are familiar with the HDI, to a higher HDI country, experienced large average gains in terms of income, education enrollment, and child mortality. Those that stay behind stand to gain from remittances flows that deliver benefits at the household, community, and national levels, including greater resilience in the face of natural disasters and economic shocks. At destination, migrants tend to do the jobs that locals shy away from. They spur innovation, create employment, consume, pay taxes, and contribute to the sustainability of social security systems. Yet, as always in development, it's important to look beyond averages to understand the full picture. As uh, Professor Rosling uh, just demonstrated so convincingly, numbers are difficult to comprehend sometimes. Barriers to mobility in terms of costs, administrative hurdles and policy preferences remain high, especially for those who would potentially have the most to gain, the poor and the unskilled. Many migrants experience discrimination, exploitation and other forms of maltreatment. Many live and work in informality with limited access to justice, labor rights, social protection, and services. While remittances from international migration are large, they also tend to be concentrated. Of the estimated $32 billion in remittances flowing into Sub-Saharan Africa last year, $21 billion went to Nigeria alone. Which leads me to my second point. As the UN Secretary General emphasized earlier today, the post-2015 agenda provides a unique opportunity to identify the most important bottlenecks and to build consensus around key priorities for realizing human development gains from migration. While there likely is broad agreement in this room that migration should be included in the post-2015 development agenda, there may be less consensus on how it should be included. This global forum uh, meeting is most timely to identify some points of convergence. There are important temptations to resist in this exercise, like trying to address every migration problem through the post-2015 framework, or mistaking the post-2015 framework agenda as a migration management tool. What we must look for are those actions that can advance international cooperation and deliver the largest human development dividends and reduction of inequalities. The Human Development Report identified a few such critical areas, including 
regular channels that allow people with low skills to seek work abroad, basic rights for migrants, such as access to services and labor rights, lower transaction costs, such as uh, for documentation, recruitment, and remittance transfers. Migration has already gained considerable traction in the post-2015 process. The Open Working Group is discussing migrants as a group of concern when it comes to access to services, such as health, protection of the rights of migrant workers, reduction in the cost of remittance transfers, improved migration policies. Which leads me to my third and last point. It is time to start thinking about implementation and the role that this forum will play in that context. As the discussion on means of implementation for the post-2015 agenda is becoming more acute, so should migration, as one of the big transnational flows that call for improved global governance, have a place? What kind of partnerships and initiatives are needed to deliver on potential migration targets in the post-2015 agenda? How would progress be tracked at the local, national and international levels? The Global Forum is where these questions should be discussed. UNDP is already working closely with the International Organization for Migration and other members of the Global Migration Group to help national and local governments integrate migration into their development plan. What is emerging from that experience is that migration-related commitments will need the buy-in of more than uh, one line ministry and of more than one level of government if they are to be effectively fulfilled. Neither can governments address them alone. Jointly with our partners, uh, UNDP looks forward to continuing to support uh, the GFMD on the topic of migration mainstreaming and to seeing GFMD stakeholders define the forum's role in the context of the post-2015 agenda. We are particularly encouraged to see so many local government representatives present in the common space today. We hope this marks the beginning of a more regular dialogue between national and local governments at the GFMD. In conclusion, uh, post-2015 is, post is a rare opportunity to integrate migrants and migration more fully into the evolving international development architecture. This common space could not be more timely, both to seek consensus on common priorities for migration in the post-2015 agenda and to begin to identify the actors, coalitions and partnerships that will be necessary to de deliver on these priorities. I wish you fruitful deliberations here in Stockholm and I uh, thank you once again for your kind invitation.